In this video, we're going to look at how to use WinDBG Preview to um, diagnose memory leaks inside .NET applications. So you can get WinDBG Preview from uh, the Microsoft Store. So once that's installed, you're going to have a more modern looking version of the classic debugger. So this is um, the application up and running. Uh, if you click file, you can actually open dump files. So I actually can uh, collect these dump files from customers that were experiencing memory problems with Universal uh, or PowerShell Universal. So uh, this is about a five gigabyte um, dump file. So once you open a dump file, you can see some information is um, printed out. And then um, also on the right hand side, you'll see that we have the threads down here that are currently running in the process. But I want to issue a couple commands to um, find out what is consuming memory inside this particular um, process. So the first thing we need to do is load the SOS commands for core CLR. So you're going to use load by SOS core CLR to load that up. And that gives you the debugging tools um, for debugging .NET applications. So once that's been loaded, what we need to do is print out the stats for the heap. The heap is one of the locations that memory is stored. Um, the stack and the heap are kind of uh, two different memory storage locations. The heap is typically what you'll see consuming lots of memory um, when uh, you have a, like a, a run, runaway memory condition like this. So there's actually a handy command called dump heap. And if you just type dump heap, it's actually going to dump everything in the heap, which is um, not very useful, especially in a very large memory dump, um, because uh, it'll take a really long time to return. So what we're going to do is we're going to say dump heap stat. So that is actually going to run across the uh, memory dump and find all the uh, objects that are currently allocated. And um, it'll give us sizes and counts of the individual types. So this might take uh, a couple minutes, depending on um, your machine's um, speed and the size of the dump. You can see here that dump uh, heap stat has returned. And it lists out all the different types that are using memory. And at the bottom, it's going to have uh, kind of the worst offenders. And we can see here that most of the memory, or a large chunk of the memory, is being used by system.net strings. And we have um, 12 million strings allocated right now. So um, you can kind of see that you know that's one big reason that uh, this, this particular process is using so much memory. So in order to actually figure out you know, what is consuming memory, we actually have to look at individual strings to see why they are currently in the heap. And typically, uh, that is accomplished by figuring out where they're rooted. And what that means is something is still like referencing them. Um, this could be like a static property or class. Um, and we just need to make sure, you know, or see why that's happening. Uh, so one thing you can do is you could you could print out all the strings. Um, you can actually use dump heap to do that. You can go dump heap um, type system dot string, and it will just print out all the strings that are allocated in memory. Uh, we don't really want to do that because we have 12 million strings, and it's going to take a really long time to print that out to um, the console here. Um, it is possible you could wait for it, but what I'm actually going to do is set a minimum um, size. So uh, this will actually um, look at the size of the allocated strings, and um, it will only return ones that are of at least a certain size. So I'm going to say 500, um, 500,000 bytes, so um, just very large strings. So if we do that, it's actually going to start running through the strings and searching for large ones. So again, this could take a while because it's got to run through 12 million strings and determine their sizes. Um, and then it'll start printing them out as it, uh, as it hits them. So um, once we get a couple strings, you can click the break command at the top left here to actually um, stop this command from running. So that took about uh, one minute on my environment to return some strings that are very large. Um, you can see these strings are about eight megabytes a piece. And I'm going to click the break command so that it stops um, searching for strings. And um, now you can see that I have you know several strings that were returned that were very large. And what you can actually do is if you hover over this memory address on the left hand side, it's actually going to um, suggest a command to you, <clears throat> which is the dump obj command. And what that does is it actually returns the, um, the variable at that, or the 
the object at that address. So it's actually dumping the object. And depending on the object, you're gonna see properties and that kind of thing of the object inside um, the window here. But I'm just gonna click this. And now you can see that it printed out the string. So unfortunately, as you can see, it says the string is invalid or too large to print because it is um, an eight megabyte string. Um, you can you know, see some of the properties of the string. Uh, you can see the length of the string, the first character, that kind of thing. Um, but in order to actually see like, you know, more information about this, like why is this eight megabyte string in memory at all? Um, what we can use for that is the GC root command. So the GC root command will tell you what is referencing this. And typically, you know, it's not a direct reference. It's, you know, referenced through a series of object references. So we're looking for the root object that is preventing the garbage collection of this string. So what we can do is say, uh, um, exclamation GC root and grab the memory address of that particular string and when you run that it's going to go and try to locate the root object that is referencing this particular string. So this particular command took about five minutes to run on my machine so um, you'll want to get a coffee uh, after running GC root. But you can see that we have a lot more information about where this string is coming from. This string is actually um, part of an error record coming from PowerShell. Um, and it's actually um, due to um, an internal script extent, which is kind of information about um, the actual script itself. So this, this string could actually be a script itself. Um, and then you can see, if we kind of go up the, the stack of objects being referenced, that this particular error record is being stored in a concurrent queue by DBA tools. So DBA tools is a PowerShell module that's actually storing error records and inadvertently storing um, pretty much copies of the script uh, inside this concurrent queue. Um, after some debugging, we found that this was due to uh, the way that DBA tools does logging. So it'll actually queue up these uh, error message logs um, in memory, and it can consume a whole bunch of memory um, unintentionally. So um, that's kind of how we got to the root cause of this particular uh, memory leak. If you do want to find out more information about the objects that are referencing this string, you can see that we have memory addresses for each one of those here on the left-hand side of this list. So for example, if I wanted to see what this exception record is, I could take this memory address and do dump obj slash d and then put that memory address in there. And it's gonna actually print out um, that particular exception record. And now you can see that we have information like uh, the computer name, the timestamp, the module method, the message here. So if I were to actually click one of these, I could see the message for this exception. And um, it's a string and you could actually dump the uh, that string um, itself, which I think actually I clicked the wrong one. There we go. So you can see here that I, um, I clicked the message and now we are seeing an error message in here. Um, and I blotted out some of this because uh, it has some you know personal customer information. So um, that's just how you can kind of dig in to find more information about the um, you know the objects around the the offending uh, you know string here. You may you know find that this you, you fix this particular issue and you still have high memory usage and you'll have to kind of go through this operation again. But this just gives you kind of one technique to look at the uh, managed heap inside your .NET processes to see why it's using so much memory. So again, we looked at WinDBG preview in this uh, video and how to use it to debug uh, memory leaks inside .NET processes. Mm -hmm.